There is a major breaking news story coming out of Brazil right now, and it's only beginning to hit the wires this weekend with everybody watching football and distracted with everything else. Nobody's really paying attention to this, but it's kind of a big deal. Now, we have talked about Brazil at length on this channel for a long time because it illustrates some key fundamental differences between liberty in South America and how they perceive it and how we perceive it. Now, real quick, just for reference, today is 8 January, Sunday, 2023. It is currently 1733 hours. That is, of course, 533 p.m. in the afternoon for those of you in the civilian world. Here on the northeast coast of Florida, currently 68, we had a beautiful high of 80 degrees today, low right around 39 degrees, so still very chilly, barometer 30.19, so we are getting that out of the way so that we can get to the important stuff. Thank you, everyone who has joined us over at Patreon. We're going to be doing a Patreon-based video on this where we talk about things, gloves off, and we tell it like it is. There's some things I'm going to cover kind of on the surface here at YouTube just to kind of get you guys a taste of what's coming because it is a wonderful teaching tool. Many people don't realize that at the very same time and shortly after, we had our revolution for liberty in North America. They had the same thing in South America. But they went a very different way. Now, on the left, we have Jair Bolsonaro. He just lost a very, 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 very close election. A lot of people are um, likening what's happening right now to what happened two years ago, January 6th. It's not the same thing at all. It truly isn't. Um, there are so many differences. Number one, there's no major event going on today in Brazil like was going on on the 6th of January where they were counting electoral votes. None of that's gone on. The transition has taken place. Bolsonaro's left the country. In fact, I believe he's just right down the road from me here in Orlando. Um, there, there's no likening of the two at all. The other thing that's very, very different about the reasoning behind what's happening in Brazil, this election between Bolsonaro and De Silva was extremely close. It more resembles Bush Gore than it resembles Trump Biden. I mean, it was just razor, razor thin. We're talking 1%. They do things differently. There's no electoral college in Brazil. So they have everybody who wants to run goes through the first round. If nobody gets 50%, the top two vote getters then go to a runoff. And that's what happened in this particular case. And it was something like, let's see, I want to get this right. 50.9% for De Silva and 49.1% for Bolsonaro, which is not surprising in the least. De Silva was very, very popular even before he went to prison. Now, here's the part that a lot of people don't get. The difference between De Silva and Bolsonaro is less than the difference between libertarians in North America and Republicans in North America. Now, to the Brazilians, those differences are fairly you know, pronounced, but from our perspective in North America, they are, they are almost the same candidate. They go about many of the things, pardon me, they go about governing the country in much more similar fashion than do, say, um, North American Democrats and Republicans. Very, very different. And you might have noticed, what does PL stand for? Partido Liberal which means neoliberal, which is a very different definition. We truly don't have any more neoliberals left in North America. A lot of people um, like to call them neocons, but even the neocons have more in common with uh, the Partido de Trabajadores, the PT, the, the Workers' Party. Now, when we think of Workers' Party in North America, we think of unions, we think of Democrats, you would have to go way back to the 50s and 60s in North America to see politicians that have the values of the Workers' Party in South America. It's very, very, very different. So I, I don't want to get too far off uh, the beaten path on this and the whys and wherefores and who's rights and who should be doing what. Um, I'm going to basically show what CNN is saying about this so I don't get in any trouble. Um, Bolsonaro supporters storm Brazilian Congress. Um, it's been widely condemned around the world. President Biden has spoken on it. 
Um, De Silva says he's going to find out who these people are. Um, there have been reports of 30 arrested, but then there's also been pictures shown of, of buses. So, you know, who knows? We're going to look more into this. We're going to do a Patreon video only on this. But it's, it's a very interesting, very strange thing. There are things that go on in Brazil that conservatives would go down and applaud and say, wow, this is great. They got so much freedom, so much liberty. But then they would see other things that go on in Brazil and they would be mortified saying, well, no, that shouldn't be allowed. This is going to lead to trafficking this and trafficking that. How many of you have seen this picture that I've used talking about this psychological operation regarding prostitution, if things would go bad in this country, if jobs would go away and there would be a depression and you know, women were forced to make some awful choices. Well, this picture that I've been using is from this article, The Lessons of 30 Years of the Brazilian Sex Workers Organized Movement. You see, they got organized down in Brazil and got recognized as actual workers, not to be treated any differently than any others. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are rolling their eyes. Florida Maki, why do you talk about this? Well, you see, they look at us as completely illogical and strange. Why, why would they say that? Well, it's, it's legal to be a prostitute in Brazil. It is not legal. Sorry, I'm having a little issue with the cursor here. It is not legal in Brazil to facilitate it or to recruit for it. If you want to go do it, that's fine. You want to go whatever on weekends, make a few hundred extra bucks, no big deal. But if you decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to go rent a house and I'm going to go see if I can say, hey, look, I... I'll charge you, all of you prostitutes so much to use this house. See, that's illegal. Going out and recruiting prostitutes and offering protection, that's illegal. So all the things surrounding it, that's illegal. But I thought this was, and this is a lot of the things that when Brazilians look at Americans, they don't understand us. They look at us and say, okay, so you're saying it's okay in Hollywood to go pretend to be a prostitute on the big screen. This is, of course, a scene from Deadpool. This is the actress, Marina Baccarin. She's played prostitutes in two major series. One's Firefly and the other one is Deadpool. It's okay to go play pretend to be a prostitute in front of millions of people for millions of dollars. That's okay. To make it look like you're having sex for money. That's okay. You're not going to get thrown in jail for that. In fact, you'll be celebrated for that. But two normal, everyday people and a couple hundred dollars will get you thrown in jail in North America? See, to them, they don't understand the moral logic. They don't understand how it can be okay just to slap an R rating on something or an NC-17 rating on something or TVMA or whatever you want to call it and pay people millions and millions of dollars to appear in varying states of dress and pretend acting out and glamorizing the idea of being a prostitute, like in Deadpool. That's okay. But normal Joe and normal Jane down the block, they're the criminal element. They're the ones who need to be arrested. They're the ones who need the police creating stings and creating all these elaborate traps to to uh, to catch them to avoid quote unquote trafficking but then movies like this that play for millions and millions and millions of people all around the world that's okay that's there there's no moral problem there you see the brazilians aren't the confused ones we are you see that's the and a lot of people are like wait it's a, it's a hard thing, but you have to take a minute, take a breath, and think about it logically. See, when I say morally okay, I mean there's no laws against it. There's no huge push in Congress to, to get rid of movies like Deadpool. Because why? Well, freedom of expression, freedom of expression, and liberty in this... Okay. Well, what about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? If somebody wants to do whatever they want to do to earn money for their life, however, as long as there's no victim involved and nobody's being forced to do anything, and some people say, well, you know, it leads to, well, 
a lot of things, you know, that's the whole slippery slope fallacy. So it's very strange to see these two things happening with um, what happened on Jan 6 here and what's happening down there. You see, they weren't trying to, the, the people that were, are doing the rioting down here now weren't trying to stop anything from happening. They weren't hanging nooses anywhere and saying this particular person here or this particular person there needs to be held to account by our mob. That's not what was going on in Brazil. They were just protesting and just doing, doing it just to lash out. And like I said, there's also one other thing, too. There was the issue with, you know, everybody was watching the Electoral College count January 2020 or November, and then things were one way when people went to bed, and then when they got up the next morning, things were another way. That was never the case in Brazil. That was never, never, never the case in Brazil. So, I mean, th there's so many things that are different about this that you really can't put the two together. You know, Bol Bolsonaro had the military on his side, and the military was doing its own audits of the election, and even they said, yeah, this, this election's righteous. You know, the military was pretty much in Bolsonaro's pocket. And even they said, yeah, you know, it was a close election, but De Silva won. So when even his own allies said this, you know, that's why he's in. Now, he didn't want to take part in the changing over of the guard, but he didn't stand in the way of it. He got on the plane. He's in Orlando. So I just wanted to cover this, you know, and just kind of touch on the major points where there are major differences. This this wasn't an election down there where it was really, really going to be, you know, hard one way and then turned out way the other way. It not not the case. Not the case in the least. They were the top two vote getters in the first round. It was very close then. And when you added up everybody else and you looked at all of the votes that were more right leaning versus more left leaning. It was close, but it looked like De Silva was going to pull it out, and he did by like one percent. I mean, it literally was like it's sixty point three million votes to fifty eight point two million votes. You know, I mean, fifty point nine to forty nine. So, it is was, and like I said, and I'll say this again, to the Brazilians, to the Brazilians. There's a big difference between these two. But to North Americans, if we were to look at these two and see all of their policy positions, we'd say that's really splitting hairs. There's really not that much of a difference compared to, say, Biden versus versus Trump or a libertarian candidate, you know, versus a Green Party candidate. The huge, huge philosophical differences um, in and how they operate. So anyway, I will leave it there, but thank you once again, everyone who's over at Patreon. Stay tuned. I will uh, put something together a little bit more detailed, a little bit more gloves off so that we can get deeper into this and keep an eye on it. So anyway, God bless, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.